Where better to start this assignment than by looking at the set of the Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse where everything on set comes to life. You have things like a chair, a window, a globe, a map. All of these objects come to life. For this assignment, you are going to be bringing an object to life. You're going to be making a object puppet. Now it's important to keep in mind when you're designing this puppet, what kind of puppet you'll be making. Are you going to make a puppet similar to, say, Cherry on Pee Wee's Playhouse, where it's a full body puppet made out of fabric with a puppeteer sitting inside of it? Are you going to make a puppet like Magic Screen here, which is operated electronically, right? Where it's going to maybe have a um, different electronic parts and gizmos on it. Um, maybe it's going to wheel around. It's going to be made out of wood and plastic and metal. Are you going to be making something more similar to, say, Mappy, uh, a giant map puppet, probably made out of some type of soft, spongy foam? This puppet is operated from behind a wall. It has a little bit of movement, but most of the movement is in like the mouth. Perhaps you're going to make a window puppet like we see here, again from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Uh, maybe it's going to be made out of a mixed materials, some wood, um, maybe plastic, and then maybe some type of um, spongy, rubbery material like we see here in the window. There's a flexible material that allows for the window's mouth to sort of flex open and closed, and this is operated via strings and pulleys. Maybe you're going to make a puppet like Globy here, which is a globe map uh, type of puppet that spins around and then it's got a full face on it. Uh, this is a hand puppet that is operated from under a table. This guy is Globy and he is made out of like a foam, a flexible foam that's been cast into a mold. All right, so there's all sorts of different options for this assignment. You can make your puppet out of whatever you like. It can be in whatever style, material. Uh, it's really not important. What is important is following the characteristics that it is an object that comes to life. So let's kind of try to zero in on just what that means. Let's say, for example, you want to do a garbage can. You're going to bring a garbage can to life. You don't want to make the mistake of making something like Oscar the Grouch. Oscar the Grouch is a furry monster, okay, that lives inside a garbage pail. The garbage itself isn't alive. The puppet the monster, the creature, whatever Oscar is, that's what's alive. So that would be a bad example. Instead, you might think of something like this, where we have garbage is alive. Or if it's the pail itself that's the puppet, you want something like this, where we see a garbage pail that's brought to life. It has eyes, it has a mouth, it has garbage coming out of its mouth. What I don't want to see from this assignment is I don't want to see a bunch of furry animals, pets, um, things that are already alive. Okay, those are not objects. Those are living creatures. So I don't want to see something like a furry dog or cat, etc. Okay, let's take for example um, the idea a student had of taking a camera and making a puppet out of that. Would you want to do is identify the important elements to the object, right? So what does a camera have? It has a lens, it has shutters, it has buttons and switches, and start to think about how those items, those different individual parts, let's say, on this larger object, how they can be manipulated or changed um, or played with to essentially create a face. 
So we can see this student's work here where they took a camera and they brought it to life. You can see that one of the button parts has an eye underneath it and by raising and lowering it, it will look like the eye is opening and closing or blinking. The um, lens has two dots towards the end, kind of like a pig's nose, right? So we kind of have, with the pink colors, you can kind of see a pig imagery coming out of this object, right? So they're linking sort of a pig's image with this camera, but it's still an object. It's still the camera. Um, and so we could start to see a face. You could see towards the bottom there all the different working mechanisms that are part of the camera. Let's look at some other student work. We'll go through that and look at it and see what sort of works and what doesn't work. Here we have a burger. This is a really fantastic puppet. This is a soft puppet. You can see there's two parts of the buns, right? The bread um, forming the top and bottom. And then what's inside the bun or inside the burger is forming the rest of the mouth. So we have like the lettuce, the tomato, the burger. Um, these form the other parts of the mouth. This is a two-handed puppet, beautifully done. The eyes blend in with the sesame seeds. Um, this is probably done with like a soft felty material. So this was all hand stitch. Really, really great craftsmanship in this puppet. Let's look at another one. So here we have someone that did a garbage can, right? So they did a rod puppet of a garbage can with a little pull switch to open and close the mouth. And they wanted to have a little bit of fun and add an animal in here. So the animal is secondary to the puppet. There's a little cat. So when the puppet opens its mouth, there's a cat inside. All right, that's totally fine. That's a separate addition. The object itself is still a garbage can, which comes to life. All right, let's look at another. Here we have a pack of cigarettes, enlarged very big, right? There's a very big puppet, a very big pack of cigarettes, and it's a hand rod puppet, and you can see that the puppet is smoking its own cigarettes. Very clever, very cute. Um, great example of a found object puppet. Uh, using fabric, there's also probably a cardboard skeleton in there, uh, maybe foam or stuffed tubes to create the cigarettes. Really great work. Next we have a toilet bowl, right? We can see that this toilet bowl uh, is kind of crotty. There's all this like blood or uh, junk coming out of it. Most likely this is made from EVA foam, whether they got green EVA foam or maybe they painted it. Um, but really nicely done the way it sort of came together with the different parts. You could see where the arm is going into it um, is a different material, not quite EVA foam. So there's a nice blending of materials to, cr to create an overall finished uh, product. Really great job here with the tongue coming out and the eyes on the lid and all the little toilet bowl parts. Very nice. Next, we have a very colorful puppet. Um, this one's a little harder to understand what it is, but it's essentially a McNugget box or a nugget box. Um, and so you see when it opens its mouth, there's little nuggets inside. And if it shakes around, the nuggets fall out. This was all hand stitched very beautifully. You could see the sleeve attached to the back side so that um, the hand or the arm is hidden within the structure. We don't want to see the hands, right? Um, we want to hide all of that. So this is a soft hand puppet, really beautiful job. Next we have a carrot, all right? Carrot's got a baseball cap. He's got little green stuff coming out of the top. We don't see it in the video, but his mouth opens and closes. This is a soft puppet, probably made out of some sort of reticulated foam or something to that nature to create its shape. Um, because it holds its structure very well. Great size, great color, really great finish. It looks like a very professional piece here. Lastly, we have a guitar. So this guitar, you can see the bridge opens up to reveal a mouth and inside the hole, right? This is an acoustic guitar. So it has a hole in the middle and there's a wandering eye there. 
very scary, very fun. Um, I would say the only negative of this puppet is there should maybe be a stick or a rod at the bottom rather than the hand being directly attached to hold or manipulate the puppet. It would be better if they could be hidden or spaced. Or maybe they could have thought about this in the design where it would look like you're playing the guitar, but as you're playing it, you're actually puppeteering it. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Really think about what the object is, how you're going to manipulate it, where your hands are going to be. You want to think about that towards the beginning, not towards the end. Um, again, this has been a demonstration of object puppets. Hopefully this helps you in determining what your object is going to be and how you're going to design it. Good luck.